Hello and welcome to According to John. Today we are on a, a wonderful question. The ultimate question. It is. The big one. Yeah. <laughs> right. The most important one. The most important one. And the question is, how do we go to heaven? Now, there's an interesting backstory to this, okay? Because what happened was I went out of town last week. And um, and I when I went out of town, we went to pick up some stuff in, in North Carolina. At any rate, I met this guy. His name's Jeremy. So, Jeremy, this is for you. I told you I was going to do it. And I was going to call you out. Now, I won't give your last name, obviously, <laughs> right? But we had this great conversation because I went down and to pick some stuff up that he was selling. And I was asking him about Jesus and heaven. And, and in all fairness now, uh, Jeremy is in search of truth, but hasn't landed yet. Yeah, seekers are going to be finders. Yes. And I asked him point blank, right? I'm like, hey, Jeremy, the real question is, are you going to heaven? Where are you with Jesus? And who is Jesus to you? Mm -hmm. And the, the reality is when he responded, and I have freedom to say all this because, again, I said I was going to do a podcast just for Jeremy. And I was going to say this is for Jeremy. Now, anybody else that can use it, praise God. I think a lot of people can use it. I think a lot of people can. And this will be a tool for our listeners to share with people you're ministering to that are, are seekers and maybe you you don't know the scriptures as well as Pastor John and I. So we're giving you a tool to help you to share with your friends. Yeah, and, and one of the things that Jeremy said was, well, I have to fix this or I have to fix that first. Yeah. And I went, no. You had better news for him than that. <laughs> way better news. <laughs> Brother, let's go into, into a word of prayer, and then we will get started if you would pray. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to share your word with our audience. We pray that you'll use us to uh, be a blessing, to uh, enlighten uh, the listeners. May we speak uh, for your glory and with your word, and may people listen for your glory and for their growth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, now, first off, one of the things I forgot was to introduce us. Yeah, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I do it. It's kind of like in church, I forget to take the offering. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. At any rate, hey, I am your host, John Westfall. This is my co-host, Pastor Duke Herget, the Duke Meister. And today we're going to answer the question, how to go to heaven. And one of the things that I told Jeremy was, hey, um, Instead of you doing all this on your own, why don't you just start with Jesus and then use his help and power to help you through your problems? Yep. If you get to Jesus as soon as possible and stay as long as possible. He'll never leave you or forsake you. It's all the answers right there. Jesus. Podcast over. <laughs> yeah, I am the way, the truth, the life. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, you know, ah. this question could be framed differently. Acts chapter 16, a kind of a dramatic situation. Uh, the Ethiopian. But no, the Philippian jailer said, what must I do to, to be saved? That's the same question. It's the same And when you question. gave me the topic, this is what came to my mind. I was there. I, all of us who are saved were there. At some point. Yeah, with a question. Right. And I, I had visited church, and I was just like, Jeremy, you know, I got to get this together. And I'm, I'm scared because I'm trying to get off dope. And right. I wasn't right. had much success. I needed, I needed some. See, I thought I had to get it fixed, and then he would accept me. And I didn't right. understand the good and news. And it's the exact opposite. It, yeah. I we need know. him to get fixed. <laughs> yeah, he's the fixer. <laughs> he's, the he's the savior. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't know that. And right. uh, Jeannie, the girl who brought me to Christ, uh, ask me uh, about how would I make it to heaven if I did. And of course, I kind of gave the Jeremy thing. Well, I got to get this. And she said, boy, I got good news for you. Yeah. But you know, with the thought about why do you, why, and she asked me, why do you believe in heaven? Mm -hmm. That was a shocker for me. And I, my answer was this. And I'm going to come around real quick and th 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 really hit the nail on the head. Uh, she said, why do you even believe in heaven? I said, because grandma's there. <laughs> And, and it turns out she was, but, and she, and she said, well, there, there's really better answer to you, to that question. And I said, well, why do you believe in heaven? She said, because the scriptures say so. Right. The scriptures that tell us about right. heaven also tell us about hell. hell. And she said, why do you believe in hell? I said, cause Hitler's there. <laughs> 
you know. It, just, isn't that interesting that uh, that's, people believe in heaven because that's where good people go. People believe in hell because that's where bad people go, but they refuse to believe how to get there. That's where I was. Oh, and, and by the way, it's up to me to decide if I'm going to heaven or hell, not you. And by the way, I'm a good person. I haven't killed anyone. I mean, it's like <laughs> you go through this whole process of insanity. I want to go to heaven, but and Jesus offers us eternal life for free. Yeah. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then I get it. Well, wait a minute. We don't want I, that. I, I don't want that. I, I want to find my own way. I want to. And, and we're actually going to talk about this whole process because the truth is, and we have to face this fact that one day, and that day that we're going to step into eternity, we have, first off, we have no clue when it is. And James says our li- your life is like a vapor, is here for a little while, and then you're gone. Vanishes away. Yeah. And, I mean, how many, how many, dude, I, I did a funeral last year for a 28, 29-year-old guy that he went to bed saying goodnight to his grandmother. Everything seemed fine, and the next morning she finds him dead. Yep, I've done lots of funerals for um, very, very young. I've yeah, done a funeral for a eighteen month or a one year old baby, and uh, no, it was even a six month old baby. And uh, so I've done some uh, funerals for very young people. Yeah. It is appointed unto man once to, to die. die, and so. then the judgment. And how about this? Uh, I did a funeral. I don't know year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever it was guy on his way home from work gets hit head on. Doesn't get home. Yep. We don't choose the time of our death. We have no clue. Right. And, and the reality is death is upon us. Death is actually part of life. We don't know when it's our day. Hey, there was a, a guy that lived right down the road from my wife's uh, uh, father and he was an avid bicyclist as a matter of fact he traveled the united states and rode in bicycle races and and you know like all these bicycle rides they had he was 40 years old 38 years old perfect health riding his bicycle and i mean he would ride he was he was semi-pro yeah, 100 miles a day, guys, then go and, out and play tennis for two hours. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've never been one of those guys. <laughs> Semi-pro goes out, flies out. He lived in North Carolina, flies out to California. Um, he's getting ready to go on his ride and drops dead of a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, death is at the door, and we just don't know it, obviously, until it hits. So the reality is death is sooner than we think it is. And not everyone is going to heaven, contrary to belief. And and the crazy part is, it's not because of what people think. Well, yeah, they're not going to heaven because they're like Hitler. <laughs> no, you're not going to heaven because you're like Hitler. You don't believe in Jesus. I mean, that's, that's, that's what the whole thing is. I, I take back to what, what you just said a moment ago. Jesus, 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 it's scripture, scripture, scripture. Right. And when I was in that crux, right on that, on that edge, it was the Holy Spirit that draws us yes. to that edge. Nobody yes. can come to me except the Father draws them. Right. I just happen to believe that Jesus Christ lighted the path of right. every man that right. comes into the world. John 1, he's lighting my path. I'm on that edge, and I'm thinking, it's all about me. Right. I got to get my act right. together. I got to clean up. And I was failing, and I was fearful because if you fail on this— well, that's the ultimate failure. Yeah. There's no recovery. Yeah. And it was interesting. I did not know the scriptures, yet I believed in heaven. I did not know the scriptures, but I believed in hell. Right. And so the girl was But, very, but even if you don't believe in heaven and hell, it does not. Doesn't change anything. It doesn't. It's still it's, true. It's still there. <laughs> it's still there. Well, Peter makes this profound statement in Acts 4, 12. And I'm going to tell you, uh, it resonates even in our postmodern world. Acts 4.12 says this, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, the interesting thing is that says Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. And, and, the, and what's real interesting today, that is not politically correct. Yeah, I was watching Oprah Winfrey one day and the question of heaven, they were dealing with it. And somebody from the audience stood up and quoted that verse. 
Oh, and boy, she got irate. She freaked out, and the audience <laughs> sided with her. Not everybody. There were people that cheered the woman. There's most of the people right. booed her. Right. But you know what? When I I heard that, I wasn't offended. I was just grateful that there was a way. Right. And the way is by faith, by grace, unmerited favor. Uh, it's so simple, except you become as a little child. Right. You want to enter in. But you see, right. that's the spiritual battle. Right. Satan because is our father before when we were we As a matter of fact, we did a podcast that will be going up after this one because this is going up first. And then um, uh, the na- uh, we're born of wrath, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's going to be going up, talking about how Satan is our father when we're born. And so we're spiritually in his family, and he doesn't like to lose his kids. Right. He wants us to serve him fervently. Yeah. But he I doesn't. Did. But he also doesn't like his kids. Yeah. He, yeah. Plus, he wants to destroy them. He wants to destroy us. That's for sure. He was, Think about that. He bought had us. He doesn't you know, look, look, He doesn't want to lose his kids, but he doesn't like his kids. He doesn't want his kids to get saved. It's like it's like a parent that's collecting money from welfare for each child, mm, don't want to lose but them. they hate the children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's he's, <laughs> that's terrible. But he has he blinds our minds. Yeah, and so yeah, when yeah. the light shines, yeah. the Bible says the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth not. Right. And so here's the plan of salvation: Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. God wants to fix this problem. Mm-hmm. He knew that sin would separate us from Him. He's holy, and sin would condemn us to hell. Sin must be paid for. Uh, but Jesus said, "I'm going to give. I'm going to have a plan to fix it. Right. I'll take the penalty for their sin." And this was a plan from the foundation of right. the world, right? Because God knew that Adam and Eve. We're going to be idiots, yeah. and that we're going to need yeah. we're going to need a way. So are their kids, <laughs> right? And the 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 truth is, Jesus has always been Plan A. Yeah, and we don't need a Plan B. We don't need a Plan B. And every Plan B, C, D is all from the devil or man yeah. at best. It's like, right. wait a minute, just listen to him. He right. loves you. He had the plan. He unfolded the plan. He gave his son. Right. He shed his blood. All you have to do is believe. Right. Well, but that's where they miss it because, you know, the truth is we're all self-made people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even though you had absolutely nothing to do with your yeah. being made. <laughs> like, if dude. we have any intelligence, yeah. it came from him. If we yeah. have any giftedness, it came from him. And to him be the glory. But right. when we try to take the glory, Satan blinds our mind, shuts right. us down. And then we hear the gospel and we reject it. And, you know, because everyone says, or it's really a popular thing today, uh, everyone's going to heaven. Everyone's going to heaven. All paths lead to, to heaven. You know, my brother-in-law, he blocked me over this issue on Facebook. Like, not just unfriended me, blocked me. Like, click, delete, you no longer exist. And I found it real interesting because one of the statements he made before he blocked me, I was having a conversation with a future family member. Uh, and Well, she's in the family. They're just not married. And... <clears throat> I said, listen, you know, the truth is you're going to hell. Well, that's that's like, I might as well just throat punch you and be, and be done, right? Because who, that's not even. I'm trying to teach Johnny some tact. I got a ways to go. Like, that's not even funny, but it is funny. Um, you know, I, I said, you're going to hell and here's why. Because you don't have Jesus. Yeah. Everyone's going to hell and here's why. It's the same answer, and that was my everybody. and that was my point. But yeah. then, but then my brother in law was like, "You don't own Christianity," and I'm like, "You're right, but I know the one who does." And uh, and then his thing is, you know, uh, there's all kinds of ways to heaven, not just your way, blah blah blah. And I go, "No, you're wrong," and that's all why you got to do is take the Bible, say, "Show me one of them." Well, and I just said, "You're wrong," and that's why you're going to hell as well. <laughs> maybe that's why. Maybe Johnny, that's you're why. straight up, dude. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you know, I don't have time to run around my people, elbows, scratch my butt. Yeah, I just some get people, to it. <laughs> some people just need to be direct. Uh, I was a little bit wimpier. Jeannie was a little bit more tender with me. but yeah. uh, Maybe hey, I need to be more tender. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't, I've, I, I've <laughs> seen uh, some great evangelists in the past that were pretty blunt. And uh, yeah. just sometimes you have to shake people. You know. Well, I, because here's the reality. You know, everyone wants to go to heaven, right? They want the glory of heaven, but what they don't want to be bothered with is the cross. Yeah. The don't preaching. Con- the preaching of the cross mm-hmm. is to them that perish uh, right. foolishness. Right. Right. But to unto, unto us who are saved, it's the power it's of the God. It's the power of God, and it is the issue. Well, and the reason they don't want the cross is because they feel like, well, if I 
And I've heard this a thousand times. Well, if I give my life to Jesus, then I got all these do's and don'ts and blah, blah, blah. And I got to give up this and I got to give up that, which tells me they already realize they want their sin more than they want God. Yeah. That, because the sin is their God. Yeah, it, it is their God and it's destroying them. Yeah, but, but they're determined they'll find another path. And, you know, um, Jesus warns us in John three thirty six. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him, present tense. He needs delivered from that wrath. Yeah. And, and that brings us to the cross. So, and here's my, here's my question, man. And, and Jeremy, this is for you too. And anybody else interested. Here's. Why is it that if we join a club, we have no problem surrendering to all the requirements to get in? Yeah. But with God, there are no, 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 no. We're, we don't, there's no requirements. God loves me just the way I am. Yeah, good and, illustration, John. And it's like, and we look, and we'll even pay the dues every month to yeah, get in, yeah. but we won't tithe. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was just in, a, in Florida, and a, a, a friends of ours that we met in Florida took us to the golf club, and they have the exquisite ho, uh, lunch room. It's it's a ho, you know it's a restaurant, but it it's really nice, nice. Yeah. and it ain't cheap, right? And you, it, I just love that illustration. You know, it's like. They have to pay a lot. And then it's like, this is the menu. Now you can choose from five or 10 things, but you can't choose from a hundred. Right. But it, and it's all good. And guess what? If you don't make the payment one month, you're done. You're done. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, there's no grace. Right. And so, but with <laughs> it's God my law and with God, God says, listen, you just surrender to my rules to get into heaven and you're in for life. And you know, there's dress code in that, that restaurant. Yeah, and it's strict, mm -hmm. very strict. Oh, wear anything I want to church, which is fine. That's we yeah, we yeah, do yeah. church that way, but not at the not at the restaurant at the golf club. There's a dress standard. You right. have to have a collar on your shirt. Well, and that's the thing that's amazing. People are willing to submit to whatever man wants, yeah. but they're not willing to but, submit to what uh, God, God wants. I don't do I do. Who's God think he is? You know, I remember working at UPS. They said, we'll give you 12 bucks an hour, but this is what you wear. It's what you don't wear. Here's what time you show up and don't you ever uh -huh. be late. And you, we don't know when you're going to get out of here. You're going to get out of here each night when we, when the work is done. And you're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no problem. And you're going to work on this belt and your, and yeah. your, and your yeah. supervisor is going to be a jerk. He's going to yeah. treat you like crap, but that's yeah. the way it is. Like, okay. Okay. But God says, believe in my son and you'll have everlasting life. Life. Oh, that's not. Oh, there's happen. other ways to heaven than that. I'm not going to believe in Jesus. You know why? And what they what people say is, um, for Christians that say that, and you and I that are saying that, oh, you're so narrow minded. <laughs> well, Oprah says she does believe in Jesus, and then she denies everything that Jesus says. <sighs> right. Right. So I I I like her as a person. She's yeah. pleasant, and she's she's yeah. A, she seems pleasant. She's yeah, a, she's. She's a hypocrite. She just she doesn't she doesn't she ain't writing the scriptures well. She ain't reading them right. No, and, but and the reason that you know people are like, oh, you're you're narrow minded. Uh, that's not right. It can't be God. Jesus is the only can't be the only way. There's got to be other ways. And it, and the reason is is because people want a watered down gospel because that does away with a need for repentance. So there's no requirement on my life. I can do whatever I want and still go to heaven. And God says, that's not how it works. And man's like, well, then I don't want God. I want to do whatever I want to do. I think it's summed up in this phrase. They don't want to suffer the, the offense of the cross. Mm -hmm. right. You know, that, that cross is stood in eternity. I mean, it's, it's stood since Christ was crucified upon it. Right. And you see Christians wearing crosses, but not willing to bear a cross. Oh, no. And, you know, the cross is our Statue of Liberty, if mm -hmm. you please. Understanding what happened on that cross and three days later when Christ rose, right. that is the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we... You know, God had that plan. It was so many details of the cross were given in Psalm 22, a thousand years before the cross. Sixteen different specific uh, prophecies were given. I, I, they pierced my hands and my feet. Can you be more specific than that? And so God laid this whole plan out, and it's like it's our plan. It's for us. Just receive it. And then yet Satan right. blinds people's minds, and right. they get angry. I'm going to judge God. Who does God think He is to tell me? Oh well, like, and who? who do you think you are to judge me to tell me I'm not going to heaven? 
And because, because people believe in a loving, non-judgmental God. They set themselves who, up as God's judge. Who never mentions sin. God, God loves me the way I am. And who requires no change in their lifestyle. God loves me just the way I am. You can't have a loving God that's not going to judge you. He doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. He does not exist. But in our mind, that's a, that's a self-justification to keep doing what we want. Yeah. Thinking that it's going to be okay. You know, and a lot of people say, my God would never send a person to hell. Well, then your God's not the God of the Bible. I like a phraseology I've heard you use many times. God doesn't send people to hell. People send themselves to hell because they reject God's uh, offer of uh, salvation. Yeah, and if you don't wear a suit, you're not getting into that restaurant of that golf club. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you're not gonna, if you're you not don't gonna... accept Jesus as your Savior, you're not getting into the heavenly of heavens, the Father's house. Yeah, that's the ultimate country club. <laughs> right? It is. And, and the truth is, guys— the judgment that we face at death is simply God bringing all the accounts up to date. Mm -hmm. And then he passes sentence on our crimes against him. I love that verse that you just gave the, the result of that verse, but it's very clear. I think it's first Corinthians two fourteen that God hath uh, taken the hand or the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us. In other words, everything we've ever said, everything we've ever done is recorded. And now mm -hmm. we know that today with technology, uh, pretty much we're doing that now by man, right. but God has that all on record. Uh, everything's uh, against us. It's, it's, it's a, it's the record. It is the actual record of our lives and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And revelation says that God has, has written everything in the books. Yeah. And that moment we put our faith and trust in Jesus as our savior. We believe what the Bible, what God says about Jesus. We believe that he's the savior of the world. And that moment we believe God takes that handwriting of ordinance against all the, our violations nails it to the cross yep. buried in the deepest sea cast as far as uh, the east is from, from the, the west, west and and remembers it right no more okay you got that point, it's no longer it's no longer held it against is. us right mm -hmm. it's kind of like going to court it's kind of like you have messed up really bad you go to court and you're guilty you're guilty you know you're guilty mm -hmm. and the judge looks at you and says you're guilty and this is the punishment for the crime way to sin is death but the judge then goes i'm going to serve your sentence and pay your fine yeah you're free to go that's exactly what has, jesus did has the bailiff come in and put him in handcuffs and take so, him to the cell and take him and pay the price that's yeah. exactly what happened i preach that in the jail mm -hmm. we do the crime jesus does the time yeah and i'll tell you prisoners get it they yeah. They get it and that, okay, they're still behind bars, but they can be forgiven behind bars and they can do the work and evangelize. I told the guys in jail, I said, what is it that I'm outside? I'm on the outside. What is it that I do uh, to, to lay up treasures in heaven outside of the jail that you can't do inside the jail? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you have this revelation like, wow, I deserve to be here. I'm not, I don't have right. a bad attitude about being here, but I'm forgiven by the, the great judge of the universe. He took my crime. Uh, I'm temporarily in jail on earth, but I have everlasting life. So they can do the same work of evangelism and discipleship right. in jail that I can do outside the jail. It just yeah. totally blows their minds. And I watched men in jail and women step up to that calling and become amazing Christians under adverse circumstances. What? Hallelujah. What a savior. Right. Hebrews 9, 27, talking about, you know, us being sentenced for our crimes. Hebrews 9, 27 says, and, and as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the, the judgment. judgment. The judgment. So that means the judgment is coming. Matthew 25, 46 and these will go away in the everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Again, it's a clear separation. And Jesus spoke, spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. Yes, he did. Jesus presented himself as Savior who offers the only means of going to heaven. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father or gets to heaven, if you will, except through me. That's not complicated, is it, John? It's not. And Jesus makes it so simple. How many people could, could take advantage of that? Everyone. Uh, that's that's more good news, isn't it? Everyone. Isn't it just silly and, and, and pure evil that people would mess around with this? This is so simple, yeah. so beautiful. As Jesus said, except he becomes a little child. You but, then, but then how many people have you heard say, that's too easy? Yeah. Well, I... I I did. And and the only reason for a that, while. that people think it's too easy, if they, if it was really that easy, more people would be getting saved. The problem is nobody wants to die to their pride. Yeah. That happened at our house. Uh, I told my mom I got saved. My mom wasn't aware of how deep I was in the drug culture. Right. I, she probably thought, well, I think maybe he smoked a joint or something somewhere <laughs> along the way because he ran in the fast crowd. But she had no clue. But I... I Came to her, I said, Mom, I got saved. I thought she'd be happy. She was mm, furious. Yes. And uh, yes. and she said, oh, all you do is say a little prayer, and then you ha you have everlasting <laughs> life. And I'm over here. I raised you guys. I took you to Sunday school right. as a child. We were just little kids. Right. And, she, but, and she said, I fed you. I kissed your boo-boos. I changed your diapers. And I'm not going to you. heaven. And I'm not going to heaven. I know. She was offended. Well, because. But, praise God, she did come to faith in Christ. Yeah. I baptized her. You'll meet her on the other side. She's a sweetheart. Because here's the truth, dude. It's not morals that get you to heaven. Mm-hmm. It's not morality that saves you because most people live on their own morals. It is belief in Jesus Christ only. Listen, once he paid the price for our sin, then we could be declared holy and perfect, which people are like, no, but check this out. First Corinthians 5, 20, or second Corinthians 5, 21. For he made him, for the father made the son who knew no sin to be sin for us sinners that we might become the righteousness of God in him. How about Acts 3.19? Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Repent so that your sins can be blotted out. Buried in the deepest sea. What you were saying earlier. Yeah, Martin Luther called it the great exchange. We give him our sins and he gives us his righteousness. It's like it's undeserved. We're justified, just as if we never we're sinned. sinned. Right. And instead of looking at Duke, the drug dealer, he says, "Look, this is Duke, my child." Right. He was an idiot, but <laughs> I, I had a plan. <laughs> he was straight up with a capital <laughs> I. <laughs> Takes you one to know one, Johnny. <laughs> That's true. Uh, All right, I'm going to give you a point. Uh, we love each other. We don't gonna, know why. I'm going to give you a point for pointing me out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when Johnny but, gives me a point. But how cool is it that, dude, we, you and I, let's face it, you and I were turds of the earth. Yes. You're being kind. <laughs> Very kind. Yes. And yes. yet God says, yeah, they're turds of the earth, but if they give their life to my, uh, uh, to me through my son and surrender, make Jesus their Lord and Savior, they'll go from turds of the earth the children of the king. Yeah. And messengers for the king. Yeah. And your whole life changes. And that was one of the things that Jeremy and I were talking about because I think Jeremy was hung up on, I got to fix everything first yeah. before I go to God. Jeremy, I understand that, but you're just this close away. Just yeah. a prayer away, buddy. And the reality is don't worry about fixing it first. Give your life to Christ and then he will give you the power to fix it. He's the fixer, not he us. He is the fixer, yeah. man. Old things will pass away. All things will become new. <sighs> you're no longer operating in your own power. You're operating in his power. And when, you know, I, I just experienced it. You know, like my filthy mouth just got cleaned up immediately. And I realized I tried to have a clean mouth. I failed, you know. And just, just like that, my... And I realized I've something happened. Yeah. I, I have power that I never had before. It is way different. And it was more than language. It was yeah. activity and it was so, even my thought life changed. Here's Thank a little Jesus. here's a little bit of a testimony. Uh I'm gonna read first Peter three eighteen first. It says uh, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust. Yep. He's the just, we are the unjust. That he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. You know, when I got when I got saved, well, all right, so I was a very heavy drinker and a heavy 
Drum user. user. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, at the time, uh, at the time I got saved, I was 145 pounds. And to give you, and you can you can see if you're looking at the video, I'm not overweight. Uh, I'm, I'm 200 pounds. I've, I've lost some. Um, but I'm, I'm six foot, 200 pounds. I got a decent build. Solid, yeah. yeah, I'm solid. I'm not, I'm not fat. And is fat politically correct? Yes, <laughs> it is. <And> so, <laughs> it so does any, appear in the scriptures. Look, look, I'm, I'm, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I go to, I go to church because I was invited. My, my, uh, so anyway, I go to church. I was invited, go to church. I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. I came home. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to give up everything for you, meaning all the drugs, all the alcohol. Of course, my freezer was full of, of you, whiskey. My fridge was yeah, full of you, beer. You knew it was destroying your life. You, the, the, the Holy Spirit makes that clear to you. Yeah, the drugs were spaced throughout the house, you know. Yeah, I know all about it. So, And, and by the way, um, at 16, or, or at 16, well before 16, um, I went through drug rehab and then... I know what it is to have the cold sweats, the vomiting, so on and so forth. Yeah. And now at this point in my life, by giving it up, I already knew what my body was going to go through. Mm -hmm. And I'm 26 years old. Um, it was October. I turned 27 in November. At any rate, I, I, I lock all the doors. I dump everything out, flush everything down the toilet, get rid of everything, throw the porn tapes out, yeah. flush the drugs, uh, pour out the alcohol, <clears throat> lock the door and said, okay, Lord, I'm yours and I'll go clean. And I sat down on the couch with the door locked, realizing this is not going to be fun. That's day one. So you repented, you turned to Christ for help. Yeah. Day three, I'm going to fast forward to day three, day three, Still no vomiting, no shakes, no cold sweats, no nothing, 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 not one withdrawal. And I'm going, I should have been in withdrawal, uh, uh, in the withdrawal stages, uh, within six to eight hours, mm -hmm. nothing, yeah. nothing. And at that point I went, okay, God, you're real. And I will, I will serve you the rest of my life. My point in sharing that, especially for you, Jeremy, and I know you don't have the drug problem and all that. Uh, that was my problem. Uh, but in, I share that with you because you, listen, would I have given it up? No, because I wasn't interested in giving it up. Would I have went without going through withdrawals? Uh, no, because in and of ourselves, man, we're going to go through that what's natural. But what's supernatural is when we surrender to Christ, he chooses, however he chooses to deliver us. And it just so happened he, he, cause he knows I'm pretty thick headed. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an idiot with a capital I. <laughs> Remember we talked about that earlier. You, you pointed it out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but again, it took one to know one. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. And so my point is we don't focus on giving up our problems before we accept Jesus. We accept Jesus. And then he gives us the strength to give up our problems. Yeah, he helps us solve our problems. He does. I remember the big Kerr flush day, and my brothers were watching me flush my dope down the toilet, and they were crying. <laughs> right? But praise God, down the road a few years, both of them had the big Kerr flush days as well. Yeah, and, and you know, because here's the thing. The Bible makes a clear distinction between the saved and the unsaved. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, we're clearly separated. And uh, John 3.18 says this, He who believes in him. The, the man who believes in Jesus is not condemned, but the man who does not believe or person, if you will, who does not believe is condemned already because that person has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God being Jesus, right? How about this one? John 1 12, but as many as received Jesus to them, Jesus gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. We have this clear separation of, uh, of those who have not and those who have. John 3, 18, I read that. John, uh, 1 John 3, 9 through 12. Whoever has been born of God does not continue in sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God, or he cannot continue to live in that sin. That's why I'm saying, once you believe, uh, Jeremy, I'm talking to you, buddy. 
once you believe in Jesus Christ, you don't continue in what you know you want to give up because it's not right. You let it go because God gives you the power to do that. Verse 10 goes on to say, in this, the children of God and the children of, de of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Again, a clear distinction of two groups, those who believe in Jesus and those who don't. Yeah, I like the, back the first verse you just read in that sequence. John 1, 12, as many as received him, you know, I can illustrate that of uh, uh, 36 minutes and eight seconds ago, uh, we started this. Uh, Johnny hit the switches. This little cubicle was dark. He hits the switches and all of a sudden it lights up. And you did that by faith. You believed uh, for many reasons. You believed that if I hit these switches, this place will light up. Right. And you hit it. And when we receive Christ, that's the switch. That's what lights it up. Mm -hmm. It's an act of our will and our mind, our, our will that we recognize I'm sinner. I'm a sinner. Right. I'm condemned. I'm sorry. God offers us by his grace, eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we believe it, we receive it. And that's the moment I call contact mm -hmm. that, 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 that broken connection is connected yeah. and the lights come on. I call it uh, stadium lights. Oh yeah. Cause there's no shadows. There's no shadows. <laughs> Johnny. Another point. Yes. Sir. I mean, I'll yeah. take it. All I'm right, in, I'm in. Yeah. You start about how to go to heaven, man. I'm in a good mood. Right. I love telling people how to go to heaven. <laughs> right. I was out in the parking lot one time. I've, I've shared this with you before in Walmart. And it was two guys squaring off to fight and about eight people watching. It was scary. They were just, they were just right at screaming and yelling. And, 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 and I just, I walked out and I, for whatever reason, I just screamed at them. I was about 30 feet away. Go to heaven. They're like, what? what did you say? <laughs> it totally freaked them out. And everybody, like, what did you say? I said, you heard me go to heaven. And they start laughing and like, Jesus is the way. And they just like, they, they like, they caught themselves and were being stupid. And they're like, thanks, man. And they, they, they shook hands and went away. And, and the people that were watching, I, they're like, yeah, they, they gave me a, like, an, uh, uh, go to heaven, just use it. I don't know where that came from, but I want people to go to heaven. Right. I'm, and I'm with you. One of the things that I want to show you though, is that if you read the Bible like legit read it seriously. Yeah, with your heart. With read your heart. With yeah, your heart. you're 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 reading to learn, not reading to find fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you do that, you, there's no way you can miss seeing it over and over again that the line is drawn yeah. between the saved and the lost. Light and dark, saved and lost, heaven and hell. If you're not for me, you're what? Against me. Yeah, just that the line is there it's, every way you look at it. It at every turn. Every book, if you will, Matthew seven thirteen through fourteen, though, really lays it out well on the, on this line. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Destruction, and there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Well, let me finish reading and then, okay. I'm... Beware of false prophets. Next verse. Yeah. There's going to be people telling you the exact opposite. opposite. Yeah. Which, which is the multitude. This. Yeah. Scripture says this. Oprah says that. Well, Oprah's such a sweetheart. Well, how Wait about this? How minute. about, how about this? Scripture say this. And how many TV evangelists? Say that. Say that. Yeah. Send me money. <laughs> That'll get you in. Yeah. Did you did you see where where Benny Hinn repented of of prosperity preaching? I did not hear that. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. To see it to believe it. Yeah. Um. There's actually a video. I got the email, and I haven't had time to watch the video, so I have to be real cautious, cautious in saying this, or at least let you know I, I didn't see the video yet. But uh, the under the underline or the the title says. Benny Hinn repents uh, 
and ask for forgiveness for preaching prosperity gospel. Well, if he goes ahead and sends back those millions and millions of dollars to those widows that he took it from, like the guy in the Bible, the tax collector, if I've... Those oh, you said, I, listen, I'll... I'll pay back fourfold. Yeah, and if he does that, then I'll then I'll believe that it's true. Yeah, right. I hope it's true. I I hope it's true as well. Yeah, I hope I'm he doesn't just repent. Breath. I hope he doesn't just repent for stealing people's money, but he repents and believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yeah, That's what I hope I for. Hope he gets saved. Maybe he did. But here here's the whole point is when you know beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. Uh, wolves, right? That's verse fifteen. But thirteen and fourteen. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. It's not difficult because God made it difficult. What he's saying, the reason it's difficult is because man finds it incredibly difficult to die to his pride. That's the difficult part. Yeah, I remember the pride. I didn't want people to know I was going to church. Because I was proud. I didn't want him to think that I was turning away from a really cool lifestyle. Pride and um, pride is the uh, most expensive thing that a, a man or woman will ever hold on to because it's going to cost you way more than you want to pay. Yeah, if you read in 8 is on wisdom, Psalm 6 is on um, the... Uh, seven abominations to God and seven things that the Lord hate. Yeah. Proud. The love. first one is pride. First one. The very the first one. Look, because pride started the roller coaster of the, the, the other six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about that in the past. It's, 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 you're at the top of the hill and you're going for the ride at that point. Pride will just take you on a ride that, uh, <laughs> it's going to cost you more than you want to pay. It's going to take you farther than you want to go. It's going to keep you longer, longer than you want to stay. stay. Yeah. 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 I'm not the author of that thought, but I like it. I like it. And and I put that in people's Bibles when I, when I, uh, no, but actually what I put in their Bibles is uh, when I give it as a gift, uh, this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep, keep you, you from, from this, this book. book. Yep. I don't know who came up with that, but I like it. I've used it too. And, but, but here's the thing. Most people find it hard to get to heaven because Jeremy, like you and, and the multitude of others, you're not alone in this buddy the multitude think I got to fix it. Uh, God, a loving God wouldn't send anyone to hell. God loves me. Uh, God's not going to judge me. You can't judge me, but there's nowhere in scripture doesn't say God's not going to judge you. As a matter of fact, everywhere in scripture says God will judge you and condemn you. Yeah. And so don't call God a liar. Yeah. The, the difficult part, right. In verse 14, uh, narrows the gate and difficults the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. And it's because the majority want to keep running the highway or the broad way to hell because why dude, it's, it's easy. You know, when I first got saved, I was, I was on fire. I think you still are, John. I was, <laughs> I was on fire. So I was inviting everybody, whether I knew them or didn't know them, I was inviting them to church. Amen. And I had a friend of mine that a coworker, uh, when I, by the time I got done talking about church and Jesus, he was like, dude, I want that. Like he was on board, you know, he was, he was ready. So he goes to church with me and we're sitting there and I'm full attention to the pastor when his preaching. Right. And I look over and my friend's sleeping. <laughs> And in my mind, I'm going, what the crap's your problem? And so I, I hit him, right? Because I'm still fresh here. I'm, right. I'm, I'm a new, new believer. I didn't have much tact. I don't know what else I'll do. <laughs> so I'm like, I hit him. And I'm going, dude, how can you sleep? This is so good. This guy's telling you how to go to heaven. And you're sleeping? You're Come sleeping, on, right? This is like, this, is, dude, this is gold and diamonds. Like, this is everything you want. And then, of course, as I matured, I realized that, he didn't have Jesus, so he didn't see yeah. the blinders, goodness. Blinders yeah, yeah. he didn't see the value in what was being said, whereas I had Jesus, and I saw the value, and that's just because I was in the stadium lights, and he was in the parking lot. Wow. I remember that first year I was saved. I took 102 people to church with me in one year. Second year, I think I took 20 because I wore everybody out. <laughs> Oh no, it's Duke. They take off running, you know. No, I don't want to go to church with you. So, oh, man. dude, I was of course you know I owned my own business for years, right? And um, for t twenty years, what was really interesting is when I would 
uh, I would I would tell people, look, I will give you a discount on your bill if you go to church. <laughs> I love it. And they would go, really? Yeah. And so I'd write the bill out for the full amount, and I would tell them, I'll give you 20% off if you go wow. to church. And so I'd write the bill, and they go, wait a minute, you didn't take the the... 20% off. I go, you haven't been to church. <laughs> you show up for church. I'll give you your money back. Some took me up on it. Some didn't. Yeah. And when I would do counseling and I would tell them, listen, I'm going to counsel. And here's what it is. It's $65 an hour. Mm-hmm. But if okay. you, but if you go to church, it's free. Mm-hmm. If you don't show up for church, your next counsel session is $65. Bring the money with you. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. I love Do it. Do you know how many people would just pay the 65 and wouldn't go to church? Yeah. I'm giving you $65 an hour to go, to, go to, church. to church and listen with their heart. They're not going to need to counsel. They anymore. don't need the counseling anymore. And, and, and I wasn't God counsel. You don't need a man counselor. Yeah. Man. And I wasn't in it for the money. I was just trying to hold them accountable yeah, and get yeah. them in there. Trying to really help them. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I would tell them the first, the first council was always free. We would meet and I would tell them this one's free. Next one is free if you decide. Mm-hmm. And they look at me. If you show up to church, you don't owe me money. If you don't show up to church, bring the money when you come to counseling. Amen. Took me a few years, but I, I, I kind of adopted that pastorally. I'd counsel anybody one time and I'd get together and, and, and I'd connect with people. I, they can tell I love them. I'm trying to help them best I can. And, and I'd say, look, God has real counsel for you. I'm just kind of hitting the narrow thing. He's going to hit the big thing. Right. And I said, I'd be glad to count. I'll just counsel you once. But if you show up, they'll say, oh, I think you really helped me. Can can I come back next week? I said, absolutely. But here's here's the price. <laughs> I said, Sunday morning after church, I always stand by the door. On the way out, I'll book you for free. But if, you, if you're not in church, then you call my office and yep. I'll charge you 50 bucks. Yep. And... Uh, but most people got it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I, I've had some get it. And then I have some were like, I'll just pay. I'm like, okay, they, you're going to really pay. It. I said, you don't understand why right. I'm not right. out for your money. Right. I could care less about your money, but I don't want to waste my time. And, uh, and you're trying to get them saved. Yeah. And I, I said, right. if, if you're not going to listen, right. I got a thousand right. other people out here that will listen. Absolutely. And so I, you're valuable to me. I don't, right. I don't want to make a penny off of you. I just want you to experience God. I want you to experience God's deliverance. Right. And to Jeremy, you know, I, 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 you hear me say it, you won't get it until you cross over. Uh, you know, Jeannie told me, well, God will, God will take care of that for you. God will take care of it. I had no idea what she was saying, but she was adamant about it. Mm-hmm. And so are we. Yeah. Put your faith and trust in Christ. Ask him to forgive you. Come into your heart and repent. Turn to him. Ask him for help, and he will help you. Well, Then you'll know, and then John can have you on his podcast. I <laughs> will. Yeah, Jeremy, there's the deal, buddy. You legitimately get saved, and we'll do a podcast together. Oh, uh, we'll do it over the phone or possibly Zoom. I just got to learn how to Zoom the yeah. two side by sides, but we'll, we'll make it happen. He'll probably be the best looking of the three, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, because he's a handsome guy. Yeah, he's a handsome guy. It'll be we fantastic. Got the bar real low when it comes to that, Jeremy. <laughs> You can bring up our game a little bit. Amen, Johnny? Listen, I'll take anything. I'll give you five points just for showing up. (laughs) That's funny. Listen, but you said it, man. Faith in Jesus. Guys, listen, Jeremy, faith in Jesus is the only means of going to heaven. Romans 10, 9. Uh, um, Well, first off, I'm going to do Acts 16, 31. Got to do that one. So they said... Believe on the Lord, and they being the apostles, they're sharing the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Meaning that your household has the same opportunity, because if you get saved, you'll share with your household, and your household can get saved. It doesn't mean that if you get saved, your household's automatic. It's not. They're going to see the change. And then they'll get saved. Yeah, most of the time, that's how it happens. But believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Acts 16 31 and then acts 10 9 that if you confess with your mouth romans 10 9. i'm sorry <laughs> thank you <laughs> i'm not going to take a point away john but uh i did correct you <laughs> yeah you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you deserve fun. it uh, <laughs> romans there you go 10 9 but i'm also going to do 10 9 and 10 romans 10 9 says this 
that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that means you confess that you believe Jesus Christ is your Savior. You've surrendered your life to him in your heart. The words mean nothing if your heart's not there, but you're going to see this in just a second. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, because the heart is the core of who we are, that God has raised him, Jesus, from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let me share what that means. And a lot of times you hear people say, and you'll hear me say, uh, I do it every Sunday, uh, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, pray this prayer. And there, and I, and a lot of people, especially now the new age, they're like, Oh, you, why you say pray this prayer? You know, cause then it's a false, it's like, no, shut up. Just let me, let me poke you in the your eye. Heart, the prayer will change everything. If it's not from your heart, it'll change nothing. So, and this is what I tell people on Sunday mornings. And I'm going to tell you today on the podcast, <clears throat> if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, the Bible says that you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus because you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Then for with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Okay. When I tell you, people, when I ask people to pray this prayer, I make it very clear. The words aren't magical. Like the words aren't what make the difference. It's the fact that you believe what you're about to say. In your heart of hearts, you're there and you're willing to surrender to Jesus. If you're not there and willing to surrender to Jesus, then you are, then it's not true. And so, so you might as well not pray this prayer because yeah, you can't fake it. You're deceiving yourself, no. and you're not deceiving God. And the truth is, your lifestyle eventually won't deceive anybody else either. <laughs> it'll, it'll happen. It'll be what it is. And so, when I say pray this prayer, it just gives you a roadmap so that you can say, "No, this day with all of my heart." I gave my life to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That's all it is when I say pray this prayer. It gives you a time stamp of the day you surrendered all. Mm -hmm. June 18th, 1972 for me. October 2nd, 1994. Yep. Which means you're a lot older than me. (laughs) (laughs) But, But here's the reality, guys. Those who have faith are guaranteed to get into heaven. God's. Promise. Promise. And God is a God who cannot lie because he's righteous and he's holy. So here's the question. Do you trust in Jesus? And then if not, here's the second question. Do you want to surrender your life to him today? If you do, then you pray this prayer. Pray it with me. Listen, again, the words aren't magical. If you don't mean this in your heart, it's, it, it's, it's useless. It's meaningless. Don't, don't even bother saying the words because I'm just giving you a prayer that you, that helps walk you through the process and gives you a timestamp where you go, nope, this day I gave my life to Jesus Christ and I meant it with all of my heart. That's all it does. And so if that's your, your desire to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, I, you don't have to understand it all. You just have to believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He rose on the third day. He's at the right hand of the Father. And he's the only way to heaven. That's what you believe. And so if that's your desire, you pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, today I surrender all. Today I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Today I ask Jesus to forgive me of all the wrong, all the sin I've ever done. Today I repent I turn from my way of life and I turn toward your way of life. Today, I repent. I'm no longer going to walk the way of the world, but I'm going to walk your way, Jesus. Today, today I surrender all. Jesus, I give my life to you. Jesus, today I make you my savior. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, The Bible says that with your heart, if you did it with your heart, that you are now a child of God. And I would love to hear from you. If you would just send it through a a message, I would, I would love to hear from you. Respond on the podcast and let me know if this podcast made a difference in your life. And if you're here today and you don't know how to, you're saved, you're born again, but you don't know how to tell people. Then what I want to do is I want to encourage you to use this podcast to share with others. To use this podcast. It's a tool. 
as a tool yeah. to help explain clearly. And hopefully, I pray we did a good job with it, Duke, and that people all understand with all of our heart. Hey, guys, listen. I pray that you gave your life to Jesus Christ today. I pray that this podcast has helped you. And if it has, please like, share, subscribe, and follow. And until next time, God bless.